You know, I just had one of those resuscitations where it just kind of was a chicken bomb. It wasn't a complete mess. There was, there was order, it wasn't chaos, but I just felt like I was constantly behind the eight ball. There was this information that I just needed that I couldn't get, and I was playing a game of guess and check, and I wanted to try and use transthoracic ultrasound, but I just didn't feel confident with it and comfortable. And I just wonder, could transesophageal ultrasound be a solution? Aiden, it's time to see the light. You're correct. Transesophageal echocardiography, TEE, in the northern hemisphere, for some reason, toe down here, could be the best way to see accurately your patient's heart during the cardiac arrest. With TEE, you can bring your eyes right to the patient's heart. You can visualize what's going on instead of trying to wrestle your transthoracic ultrasound probe around the ECG electrodes, around the defibrillator pads, around those sensors that tell you if you're pressing hard enough. You can instead bring your ultrasound probe right to the heart and see more quickly and with more detail exactly what's going on in that patient with cardiac arrest. It'll be faster, and there's good evidence for this. Echocardiography patron saints Fair, Okersee, and Malin have actually released a study showing that pulse checks and pulse check interruptions of CPR were actually shorter with transesophageal echocardiography than with traditional TTE and much, much shorter than traditional barbaric palpation checks. They were shorter than T. TEE was shorter than TTE by over two seconds. And two seconds is a lot when you're looking at interrupting circulation. And you're not only gonna see the heart better during those very brief and informative pulse checks, you'll also see the heart better in between. And you can direct your team to better be pressing on the chest during CPR. You can see if they're compressing the heart appropriately and confirm that the depth of compression, you can see everything so much better, Aiden. It's time to step into the light. You want to take a toe and stick it down someone's throat during cardiac arrest? It's not only is that weird, that's totally gross. All right, listen. You want to take something the size of a garden hose, lube it up, and cram it down someone's esophagus in a room full of people jacked up on adrenaline? That sounds like the perfect opportunity to knock out a tooth, dislodge an endotracheal tube, or perforate someone's esophagus. That person has enough problems without you causing more complications. That sounds almost as good of an idea as having a smack family feud. <laughs> but the other thing is, is that what are you going to do for the person who comes in with a supraglottic airway? You're going to take out that supraglottic airway, endotracheally intubate somebody, put the TE probe in, all while high quality chest compressions are happening? It's just not going to happen. And those two seconds that you talked about, two seconds that you're getting better at using transesophageal versus transthoracic, I'll tell you what, why don't you give me $100,000, the price is gonna take you to start a program, give it to me, and I'll come to your hospital, and I'll show everyone how to do transthoracic echo even better. And I'll throw something else in. I'll give a free course on how to check pulses even better, and we'll give everyone a certificate and call them all certified pulse checkologists. <laughs> Claire, I'm just not seeing how TE is gonna be very helpful. I don't know. It might sound to you sometimes that you're trying to bring something new and life-saving into your department, and there's a devil on your shoulder, or maybe it's not a devil on your shoulder, maybe as St. John of Hines would say, maybe it's the recess wanker in your department trying to hold you back, trying to tell you that such and such very rare complication is a reason to not provide better care. But we do know that Complications like esophageal perforation are serious, but in well-trained providers, this is a rare complication from TEE, and indeed, it's much more important that we provide good quality care, that we not interrupt CPR for any more than we have to, and that we find out exactly what's wrong with the patient who's in cardiac arrest. These are sick patients for whom seconds matter. It matters that we are able to see how that left ventricle is pumping, what the rhythm is during that pulse check. Maybe they will also see a dilated right ventricle. 
that we wouldn't have otherwise seen while struggling transthoracically. Perhaps we'll also see that pericardial effusion. Maybe we'll see another pathology like a dissection that we otherwise wouldn't have known about. This is a tool that can allow us to be smarter physicians and give us answers faster. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you just call me a wanker? I might have, I might have called you a recess wanker. <laughs> All right, Claire. Let's just say that complications from transesophageal echo are rare, and I'm not saying that they are. And let's just say that your CPR is actually better when you're doing transesophageal echo. Again, I'm not saying that they are. Who is going to pay for a brand new probe? A TE probe costs $30,000. $30,000. That's the price of a, a Honda Civic. Why don't you use the probes that you already have in your department and just get better at using that? And um, take that $30,000 and buy your cardiologist a Honda Civic. I mean, you can even call it the cardiac cath mobile and make them come to the hospital whenever you need an emergent cath. But investing more money and equipment in the department, I'm just not seeing it, Claire. You know, it really doesn't matter what you call that Honda Civic. And I mean, I don't know if it's, if it's the same where you work, but none of the cardiologists at my center would be caught dead riding around in a Honda Civic. <laughs> doesn't matter what kind of label you put on it or how much money you pay them. But it's true, it's challenging. Cost is challenging in cardiac arrest, absolutely. It is challenging to argue that we should provide something different for our patients, and it's challenging to make the argument that we should bring in a new tool. But if your center's anything like mine, then you're already working with a team of people and a lot of equipment that's already been invested in providing the best quality care. They've invested in that ultrasound machine and teaching you how to use it. They've invested in teamwork and all the other equipment and facilities to save that patient in cardiac arrest. And your cardiologist and your anesthetist aren't going to be there at four in the morning, but the rest of your team is, and they're going to need that extra quality equipment to bring more information about how to save that patient. Additionally, and maybe this is a more important argument, Transesophageal echocardiography, when you learn how to do it, it isn't just a single-use device. Yes, you can put it down in that cardiac arrest, drop that probe, take a look at the heart, find out what's going on, but you can also use this tool in the patient you've intubated who didn't yet arrest and try to understand their undifferentiated sepsis, take a good look at their heart, help assess their volume status, and monitor them. You can leave that probe in after ROSC in your cardiac arrest patient and continue to gather very important data to help improve their care and get them on the right road faster. Truly, there's a lot of potential for TEE. All right. Let's just say I give it to you that the complications from TE are rare. And let's say I give it to you that TE makes your resuscitations better. And let's say I even believe that your hospital hallways are paved with gold and money is no issue to buy a probe. Who's going to train you how to do TEE? Who's going to do the training? You think you're going to watch a YouTube video and a blog post and learn how to do it? This is a highly technical skill. Do you have emergency medicine doctors or intensivists in your hospital that are doing this routinely? Oh, maybe you should go ask the cardiologists and the anesthesiologists. Good luck with that. They own TEE, and they're not just going to hand over the keys to their cash cow to you. So being that this is such an important procedure that needs certain amount of training, I just can't see how you're going to get TEE going in your hospital. You're going to hear this argument from the recess wankers in your department as well. But you know what? Now we are the people that own the recess room. We are the individuals at four in the morning who are down there with the sick patient when the cardiologist or the anesthetist may not yet be there or they may not be on their way in in their Honda Civic. It's important to be well trained for everything you do and TEE is no exception. But now we're in the day and age of more access to more medical education, more training. And if you can open your smartphone or your laptop and you can look up and find transesophageal echo courses all over the world every month of the year, online modules, distributed education, courses you can take in person, courses you can take abroad, this is something that's exploding, and it's becoming something that we can bring into our recess rooms much more easily. And you don't even have to wait till that. Why don't you come down at lunchtime and join us, and we can show you in person a little bit more about how to bring this tool into your department. This is something we can bring to our sickest patients to learn more quickly how to save their lives. 
Aiden, it's time for you to step into the light. All right, you know what? Nope. Take tea. I got bigger fish to fry. I'm about to go talk to a bunch of hospitalists and convince them to put Foley catheters in all their admitted patients.